Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Phil Waybright Gymnasium, where tonight we are bringing you the Argus Lady Dragons versus the Westville Lady Blackhawks in a uh, in volleyball action. Uh, we are running a little late tonight. The uh, the JV game uh, went uh, they in, ended up going into all three sets where. Uh, the Blackhawks uh, won the first set by one point, and then uh, uh, Argus came back and uh, won the uh, the second set, uh, 25 to 19, and then uh, ended up losing the third set. I believe it was 15 to 12. Um, I'm joined here tonight with uh, Zach Schaefer. Um, he will probably have some stats here for you. Like I said, we're we're still watching right now. You're watching the. Uh, the ladies warm up. The Lady Blackhawks are out on the court right now getting their warm-ups in. And then uh, here shortly, the uh, Lady Dragons will be taking their turn uh, out onto the court to do their warm-ups. And then we will be getting the state the, the uh, game started. But I'll go ahead and turn this over to Zach. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV4. Well, good evening, Phil. We've got uh, Westville in the gym tonight coming in with a 9-3 and record overall on the season so off to a good start here 12 games in uh, head coach Dale Lake uh, brings Westville into Phil Waybright Gymnasium and also with Westville seven seniors on the roster and just kind of looking at stats before the match I'm gonna guess that five or six of them definitely get a lot of playing time so it sounds like a very uh, experienced group or um, not sure about previous year's experience, but as far as this season goes, uh, a lot of seniors seeing a lot of time on the floor and just watching warm-ups here. Definitely have a, a nice balance, it looks like. We've got uh, Libero for Westville and Peyton Rogers out there on the floor and looking at their stats again. Got a nice balance on some of their hitters that we'll get into as the match is underway. Uh, the Lady Dragons, with Coach Schaefer, come in at 2-12 and 12 on the season. Picked up one win over the weekend at the Triton Invitational and dropped two others. Uh, but able to get a win against Culver in a best of three matchup. And I think it was last week sometime, maybe Tuesday, that I know the Lady Dragons went over to Culver and dropped a five-set match, three games to two. Uh, so they were able to bounce back there and get the best of three matchup against the Lady Cavs at Triton. But this will be a nice test again for the Lady Dragons this evening as they face off against the 1A Westville Blackhawks. Well, it's just like the other day when they uh, uh, played the, I think it was the LaVille team. One thing I noticed, and I know that they don't have their heights on here like they did when, when we played LaVille, but just looking at it, it looks like there's some girls there that are uh, pushing that six foot mark or above. Um, so I don't know if they, you know, We've got basketball players on here, too, so it'll be interesting to see how high that they're uh, getting above that net. Yeah, they've got a couple up there uh, listed at 5'10 on the, the roster they have online, but I always say that's six foot once they put the shoes on, right? Yes. Maybe that's how they measure them to begin with. I don't know, but it always sounds better that way. But, uh, yeah, well, we certainly got our fair share, though, with uh, Schnitz and Dreamo Richard bringing the height for us over on our side of the net. And I just looked earlier, I believe they are... Uh, tied for kills on the season. Yes, they both have 42 coming into this match. Uh, so again, we've got a nice balanced attack. You'll see them in separate lines typically. Sierra will be in the back row while Dream is in the front row and they'll have a nice rotation there to always have one providing a middle attack for the Lady Dragons as they take the floor for their warm-up session here. Well, what we'll probably do here is we're probably going to go ahead and uh, let you folks uh, go ahead and watch the rest of the warm-ups and we're going to go ahead and mute the mics and and uh, as we get things started here as the uh, Lady Dragons finish up their warm-ups and uh, we'll get things started. I know I, I want to say that we're going to play the National Anthem but I know on, on Thursday we did not. <laughs> I don't know if we had technical issues with the sound or, or what but uh, I know on Thursday night I got all set and had the camera pointed at the at the flag. Next thing you know, all the all the girls are going out and they're ready to play. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and mute the mics here and let you uh, finish watching the warm-ups here. All right, and we are back here at the uh, Phil Waybright Gymnasium where 
Uh, they've just finished up the the uh, warm-ups for each of the uh, squads, and it does look like we're going to be playing a national anthem tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. the starting lineup for the visitors, the Westville Blackhawks. I'll kind of be following along with our PA announcer here. Number three, Janasia Bernard, a senior. Number four, a senior, Sarah Heinrich. A junior, number eight, Paige Chasco. A senior, number nine, Nicole Albers. Number 13, a senior, Madison Deneco. The libero, number 10, a senior, Peyton Rogers. And I was unable to see the number. At first on the far side, it was number 11, Faith Baltzell. And for the Lady Dragon, number 6, Kendall Ferguson. Number 8, Dreamo Richard. Both seniors. Number 9, Sammy Ferguson. Number 11 is the freshman, Allison Grotus. Number 13, Caitlin DeWolf. Number 14, Kaylee Bradley. And the libero for Argus. Oh, we're going to jump over number 18, Mackenzie Cox. Got ahead of myself there. She's the setter. And now the libero, number one, Maddie DeWolf. Have the whistle here, and we will get things underway momentarily. This takes a minute after the starting lineups for the referees to get settled in. Got to check lineups as the teams make their way out on the court. Be just a just a minute before we get underway here with the uh, Westville Blackhawks having a, a, a seven senior team looks like after this year uh, looking at the rest of their roster it looks like they're gonna be a pretty young team going for the next couple of years a young team and probably thin on numbers from what we see um, as far as two squads go certainly capable of having the varsity squad and who knows who's coming up here in the next freshman group but yeah, seven seniors, that's a big hit to a, to a roster that looks like might be about 13, 14 players deep maybe. So yeah. about half the team is going to graduate at the end of the year here. I'm going to try to mark off my starting lineup for Westville here. It's on the floor. Did mention Heinrich, number four, is the setter for Westville. And 10... Peyton Rogers libero looks like she's ready to step onto the floor as Argus's libero Maddie Williams has already taken her place for Allison Grohaus in the back row. Heinrich will be up first to serve for Westville. 
as we are underway here at Argus High School. And right off the bat, Heinrich able to find a gap between a pair of Argus players on the back side. Dreama Richard gets the pass up to Mackenzie Cox and the attack by Ferguson. Westville gets crossed up and the ball hits the floor. Good to have Mackenzie Cox as she subs out here. Uh, good to have her back in action. She has been battling, I believe it was a wrist injury over at Culver last week. So she is, this is her first game back in the last seven days. Glad to have her back on the floor as one of our two setters. Her along with Kendall Ferguson, and at times we might see Caitlin DeWolf in that spot as well. Looks like we had a deflection at the net, and that'll be a point for the Lady Blackhawks. So five games in, Phil, are you a volleyball master yet? Are you a volleyball wizard? Not even uh, close. <laughs> but you know more than you did probably the first day. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Right? <laughs> Caitlin Bradley plays the free ball over. That's going to be Bernard with the attack at the front row. Bradley again on the attack, that ball's wide. And out of bounds, Westville takes the early 3-1 lead here in the first set. Maddie DeWolf with the pass in the back row. Kendall Ferguson with the back set, did look like Dreamer Richards attack. Her feet got across the boundary there underneath the net. The violation will be a point for Westville. Just scrambling, scrambling a little bit defensively. Got to get our passes to our setter as uh, Bernard making easy work of a couple overpasses by the Lady Dragons. Another senior, Nicole Albers, back to serve for Westville. We'll say senior a lot of times for them. Having a laugh with our line judges down there. Do they, did she forget she has the flag? That tends to be a popular thing. Is, is that what they were? No, I think <laughs> it was the uh, um, placement of where her whole body was oh, at. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just trying to get her in a better spot to see. All right. I know sometimes the line judges are giving those flags, but they're so used to the hand signals. With, they just kind of do it with the flag in their hand. And This will be a quick timeout by Argus. Westville up 6-1. to one. Well, early on, it's been the serve-receive that's caused some problems for us, just unable to get into much of an offensive rhythm as we've been chasing, chasing serves around. Sometimes a quick timeout hopefully can get us kind of regathered a little bit, get us back organized. That and hopefully to just break up that uh, momentum that they've got going. Sometimes it's a way to just ice the server a little bit, perhaps server might come out and make a mistake and help us out a little bit. Yeah, like we were talking talking earlier, there uh, on the Westville site, there is a sparse crowd out tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a lengthy travel. About an hour into a different time zone over here at Argus. And that JV game took a lot longer than some other, compared to your average JV contest, took a little while, kind of getting a late start here for, for us, but fortunately they're on the central time heading back. Ferguson with the back row attack, Dreamer Richard at the net, and she gets the block. Actually, we call it more of an attack, uh, more of a kill there for Dreamer Richard, putting that ball down into the floor, and Shira Snitz checks in to the front row with Richard back to serve. Ben Schnitz and Richard coming into the contest with 42 kills each. Westville unable to do anything with that serve. Makes it 7-3 in favor of the Warriors, or the Blackhawks, sorry. I knew I was going to do that at some point. I don't even know <laughs> where I'm, if I'm pulling that from Westview, perhaps, I believe, that is the Warriors. And I knew I was going to do it. 
Kaylee Bradley's free ball will go to the back row to the libero. And Bernard finds a hole in the back corner. I think we just got caught running to our setting position a little too soon there. And Bernard trying to loosen up the arm after that attack. She goes back to serve. Her serve's going to find Maddie DeWolf. It's a good pass to Kendall Ferguson. Her set's going to find Schnitz. <coughs> but off the outside of the hand finds the net. But a better pass there. Gave ourselves a better chance offensively to get into an attack. It's going to be DeWolf again. And we're going right back to it. And that's a good attack there by Shira Schnitz. And she's going to get the kill. The assist from Ferguson, I like that we went right back to that. Same combination there with DeWolf to Ferguson to Schnitz, who gets the kill, 9-4 to four of Westville. Kaylee Bradley, one of the seniors for Argus, with the serve. And the attack by Faith Botzell, one of those attacks that caught the fingers a little funny and sometimes can do more damage than a regular uh, spike off the hands as it kind of fluttered to the floor. Paige Chasco back to serve for Westville. And DeWolf to Ferguson again, and we got Schnitz with the middle attack. Does a good job of reaching back over her shoulder with the attack. And I believe the kill might have been by Deneco. I got my head up a little late there. Westville able to find a hole on the floor. Dreamer Richards pass to Ferguson and Caitlin DeWolf will shoot it to the Westville side and it's Deneco again. And that attempt will sail just long, only about a few inches. Looking for the cross court corner attack. Mackenzie Cox is gonna come back in to serve. Good placement on the serve, and Deneco is just going to play a pass over to Baltzell, whose free ball is over. Mackenzie Cox tries to sneak it over on two, and Sarah Heinrich returns the favor. The little trickery of her own. It's a good idea by Cox, just unable to find a hole, and Heinrich was able to do so. Sometimes mixing up that play is just enough to catch the defense off guard a little bit. Good attack by Schnitz, kept alive by the Blackhawks. They will play a free ball over, but Argus unable to do much with it. They send a free ball right back, and just over the edge of the net is Baltzell ready to drive that one home. She is a freshman for Westville, so they do have one of their own out there, the only one on the roster, and she does have varsity playing time. During this pass is low, and don't like to see that out of McKenzie with that sore elbow or wrist hitting the floor like that. And came up a little slow, but kind of rubbing that arm down. Hopefully she's all right. Better pass there. He's going to find Cox. That set's going to be tight to the net. So I do see the Argus girls soccer team is already back from their game down at Rochester. Oh, this they were down in Rochester They today? were down there today. I, I received word that Argus did go on to win that one 4-0. That's the only score I got. I don't know if that's a varsity-only contest these days or not. Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah. And I know when, uh, when, Ashley, when Ashley and Caitlin were playing, it was a varsity-only that our JV got sent down to. <laughs> Kendall Ferguson's passes off the mark. Dream of Richard doing her best to chase it down, but and just the story early on here is giving ourselves a chance to get into our offense as Deneco for the Blackhawks is back there serving away. That's a tough serve. Caught the forearm of Kendall and caught her in the chin all the same time. Caught her in the so. chin. Ricochet up into the chin.
Passes up by Richard. The set, McKenzie. And the attack is just into the net by the Lady Dragons. We're just unable to get much going here. Westville's not doing anything fancy as far as the serves just find the middle of the floor. We're just unable to get into a solid offensive rhythm here. Girlhouse comes in, makes an attack, but Westville able to return it. Richards' ball will be played to Cox, and Schnitz's attack sails along. So it's been a story of unforced errors for the Lady Dragons here in the first set. Definitely like to find ways to force Westville to have to make some plays of their own offensively. Because I'm not sure they've had maybe a kill or two, maybe a couple offensively for them. Yeah, so far it's just been very good placement and finding the holes. Otherwise they've got a lot of points off unforced ears and served by Deneco is another point for Westville. And they have quickly rallied off a handful. We don't have any specific scoring up here, but 22 to 5. It's, it seems like she's been back there for 7 or 8 maybe. Lady Dragons need to find a way just to get a side out here and get control of this serve. And Maddie DeWolf to Groat House. Now in there it looked like it was a swing and a miss. Yep, that's a tough angle as the ball's coming over your back shoulder like that to try to swing at. A free ball would have been the better option. Try to put the ball in play again, make Westville have to make a play. Maddie DeWolf's free ball is over, and we'll see if Westville can earn a point here. Schnitz with the block attempt at the net. The ball kept alive, but we're going to have a line violation underneath the net as Ferguson attempted to make a play and cross the center line, and Westville takes the first set very quickly, 25-5. to five. And if you are just joining us, <clears throat> you're watching the uh, Argus Lady Dragons versus the Westville Lady Blackhawks here on Argus TV at RTC TV4. Uh, like Zach had just said, the uh, Lady Blackhawks just took the first game, pretty much dominated that whole game um, with the serves. I think they, they had, what, maybe just a handful of serve, you know, serve switches and and uh yeah i don't think we i don't think either team made it through a rotation that's yeah for sure get a chance to try to regroup we know we can play much better than what we showed there in the first set like i said if nothing else you got to put the ball in play and um, make westville make some plays offensively yep well we got two minutes remaining we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break here real quick and then we will be right back right after this message I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> We're back. We have a minute and 20 seconds left before the uh, start of the next set. Looks not like Westville's already out on the court and they're ready to go. Not a lot to talk about from the first set, like we said, other than trying to come out a little sharper just in the second set with execution. There's nothing fancy that Westville was throwing at us. In fact, most of the time it was a serve over and <laughs> just unable to get the ball back over the net Yep. on our part. Uh, we just got to do a better job of moving our feet on the serve received, communicating, just having confidence, get those passes where they need to be and confident in our attacks. We certainly have had the ability at times throughout the year uh, to make sharp plays. We just got to be a little bit more consistent in doing so and find ways to get out of 
those droughts that we find ourselves in from time to time. It's something I've seen throughout the year where at times other teams, they get a they get a rally on their serve and we just kind of get stuck in the rotation. Yep. And credit to Westville, that was Deneco back there serving. Probably, again, we don't have a scorebook in front of us, but it might have been 12 or 13 in a row and credit to her for keeping them in play. No ball off the net, no ball out of play at, at any point. So they're doing their part to uh, not have any unforced errors there and make us make a play. And I do have a question, you know, and I've seen this a couple of, couple of different times. You see the six girls go out onto the court, and then the libero comes in before they've even started. That's just showing the, the starting rotation so that they know where Grow House will be in that rotation. Okay. Okay. And so she's out there, but then our libero, Grow House does not play the back row for us. She'll play the front row only, so our libero will step on the floor at that point. And I believe Westfield did the same thing over on this side as we have a net violation. Bernard looks like she's got her hands into the net, and we will be on the board first. Up one to nothing. Kendall Ferguson back to serve. Bernard's free ball. Maddie DeWolf will dig it up, and Katie Bradley does her best to have quick reactions to get it over the net, but it catches the tape and comes back down. One to one early on here in set number two. The barrel kept it alive. Bernard's attack over the net. Ferguson. Bradley is just going to play a tip. But Westville able to get underneath and a couple attacks off the net both directions. Westville, good job to keep it alive. Play a free ball, but Ferguson's ball is back over the net. Good rally here. But finally the Attack was deflected off Richard's hand and Fergus unable to corral it on the back line. Probably one of the better rallies we've had of late as far as I think both teams getting about three or four opportunities. And more of what we'd like to see. Give ourselves a give ourselves a chance here and make Westville earn the point. Oh, jump way too soon. Just <laughs> launched a little early. But, right idea. Pass was good, set was in the right area. Ferguson's passes over the net, and middle hitters just love that. They get a big smile on their face when that ball's just, just coming over to your side of the net. And it's just a poke down by Bernard to get the point for Westville. Served by Heinrich finds the net. Of a substitution as Shira Snitz will come onto the floor in place of Sammy Ferguson. Number eight, Dreama Richard, back to serve. She's got a nice top spin serve, finds the back row. Deneco able to keep it alive, and it'll be Heinrich with the free ball over the net. Richard gave it the best attempt at the diving play on the floor, but the ball is out of bounds here on the near side. Senior for Westville, Nicole Albers. Puts the serve to Schnitz. Ferguson, and it's gonna be DeWolf. Looking for a hole on the short side of Westville. Bernard's play over the net. And this time Bradley with the attack to the back corner. And just wide. Not a bad spot on the floor to look for though. I have a substitution here for Argus as number seven. Samantha Rose is going to check into the game for the Lady Dragons in place of Dreamer Richard. They had a wolf good pass to Ferguson, good set, and Schnitz with the good attack. That's a nice job by Rogers on the back row for Westville to keep it alive as Heinrich's free ball will find the net. Dragons pick up the point, seven to three. Allison Grothouse now coming back in in place of the libero, Maddie DeWolf. Kaylee Bradley will serve. 
And likely we'll see the Wolf come back in defensively on the next side out. One part about that libero position, you get a short breather. You get over there, get a drink of water, and usually you are used much of the game, which is why we put that special jersey on you. So here she comes right back in. They don't usually complain about that. No, most of the kids, all they want to do is just play. And Bernard finds the wolf with her serve. Caitlin, good job to make the tip and not make contact with the net. It's going to be the Neko for Westville. Her attack to the back row to Maddie DeWolf. And Kendall set is shot over by Maddie DeWolf from the back row, doing her best job to jump from behind the 10 foot line. Schnitz gets over and gets a hand on the attack by Westville, but the deflection finds the floor. Here's pass in tight. Kendall able to keep it alive, and Sam Rose will play the free ball over. Schnitz with the block attempt back over to Westville. Sam Rose to Ferguson. It's going to have to be a free ball by DeWolf. Middle attack by Beltzel. She's looked for that attack a couple times, but Schnitz has been reading that play in the middle of the court. Does a nice job there to break up the play, and Mackenzie Cox will sub back in and back to serve. Neko plays the free ball over. Good opportunity here for the Dragons. Mackenzie Cox finds the left hand to Sierra Smith, and what a heads up play by Sierra Smith. Good vision by, good vision by the junior to find an opening on the near side. That's one of the better attacks we've had today and I love Sierra's vision to see that hole. It doesn't always have to be a big kill but does a nice job of getting fingertips on the ball, finding a hole on the floor and getting the point. As the Dragons are coming alive here a little bit, definitely showing more effort and activity. Execution may not be perfect at all areas still but we're definitely doing a much better job of getting after the ball and giving ourselves attacks. Attempts as Schmitz gets one of those floaters right over the net that we talked about earlier and she slams it home. So a couple kills in a row for C.R. Schmitz and the Dragons find themselves down three, nine to six. Cox a serve, sails long. It'll be Westville's Paige Chasco back to serve. A good little run there to get us back into this thing a little bit, see if we can get a quick side out. Ferguson keeps the ball alive, and Westville with the unforced air at the net will return the ball back over to the Lady Dragons as Dreamer Richard looks to sub back into the game here at the front row. Schnitz's serve, finds the middle of the floor. Heinrich looking for Baltzell, deflected with the net by Richard, kept alive, and Mackenzie Cox. Her set is to Kendall Ferguson, and that ball does find the line, and that'll be a kill for Kendall Ferguson and the assist to Mackenzie Cox. There's some of those good moments we were talking about during the break. We just gotta get a little more consistent with stringing some together, but Definitely battling this set so far and finding some good offensive plays. Schnitz's short serve. Neko just barely able again. Richard trying to find a hole in the back row. I like the vision again of our girls. And a nifty little play by Heinrich. She's found that a couple times. You kind of get a little stagnant defensively as you expect three hits. You might expect that set. And Heinrich doing a good job of looking over her shoulder and finding holes in the Argus defense and picking moments to send it over on two. Sammy Ferguson has checked back into the game for Argus in place of Schnitz. We will get a much deserved quick water break here. 11 to eight the score. Yeah, it looked like that ball did hit the line and 
Our line judge went from out to in pretty quickly. Changed your mind, but I think she made it right. This is the rotation last time that really hurt us. It's Madison Deneco back to serve for Westville. Ferguson's free ball is going to find the back row. Heinrich over to Albers. Well done by Mackenzie Cox to keep the ball alive, and then Richard and Grothaus able to free ball it over. See if we can finish off getting the point here. That's going to be Cox's set attempt that goes over the net. Ferguson, Grothaus again. We're scrambling, but we're doing a good job keeping the ball alive, and we get rewarded for it. Ferguson with the final attack attempt there for the Lady Dragons. A good job by Argus there. Wasn't the prettiest rally, perhaps, but a good job getting a hand on the ball, keeping it up, giving ourselves a chance. <whistles> Kaylee Bradley back onto the floor with Maddie DeWolf back to serve. That was a good job by Heinrich to get that ball over to Botzell and give her a chance. Unfortunately, her attack uh, hits the pole, and that's an out of bounds, and Argus. Showing some life here in the second set, down 13 to 10, and I believe Westville with the timeout. A lot better effort out of the out of the Dragons this uh, this set here than what we saw in the first one. Yes, we. I don't know if it was the pep talk. Sometimes just a slow start for whatever reason, and we're we're just hustling after a lot more balls, bodies going to the floor, trying to keep things alive, and so it's not always the prettiest, but you get rewarded for that once in a while, as we've done a couple times here. I keep looking at the scoreboard and it's like we're down through down. I feel like we, we should be tied. I, I feel like we've done a lot of good things here. We just got to get over this little hurdle here. Try had, to a lot, had a lot more uh, uh, volleys this, this so far this a lot set more, than what it was the first set. Yes, a lot more back and forth. And we got Westville out of that rotation that served them well in the first set with Deneco back serving. So kind of puts us in new territory for this match as far as these teams haven't even been in this rotation yet. So we'll see how things go as our libero Matty Dwolf is back to serve. And it's out of bounds on the near side. And that's what those timeouts can do sometimes. Just ice that server and make you come out after a minute break and put a ball in play. And now it's going to be the libero for Westville, Peyton Rogers. Unable to do anything with it on the defensive side or on the serve receive side there for Argus. So we got to limit that damage. We got it within three. It's open back up to five. And Westville is going to help us out a little bit there with that serve going out of bounds. This is a moment in the game where you're just looking for a couple 2 0 runs, 3 0 runs. Try to tighten that score up a little bit. But again, overall, the effort much better out of the Lady Dragons. Bernard, her hit attempt is into the net. Coach Dale Lake over there for Westville telling her to explode off the floor. And get up there and hammer that thing. Kendall Ferguson, a little floater serve. Finds the libero. And that's going to be Albers with the tip attempt. Kept alive by Caitlin DeWolf. Nice set by Ferguson and Bradley with the attack. Tipped by Bernard at the net. Albers again, this time it deflected by Lady Dragons at the net. Sometimes those deflections can be harder than no deflection to read defensively. We're there. We either just need to get our timing down a little more. Perhaps our height just isn't quite there to get the full-on block, but we're in the right area. And the Wolf has a nice approach, just the Timing on the jump, still a little bit on the early side. I'd love it if she could float for an extra second or so and get another six inches off the ground. Right. But her approach, her idea is good. Just got to get down the execution. That's a great ball by DeWolf there. Dream of just unable to line it up and get a solid hit on it. And that's going to come. That's going to come with uh, with more. More play time. I mean, she's only a freshman, so. That's right. And the set you get at the varsity level might be a lot different than the set you got at the junior high level. You might have had a lower set. Who knows? And just getting the timing down with these setters. Like you said, it's going to take a little time. So Westville has opened this up to a 
seven point contest. I believe it's the setter Heinrich with the jump serve for Westville. Kendall Ferguson does a nice job to punch that ball over. Kept the ball alive and the Dragons will get the point. As Schnitz comes back onto the floor at the front row. Dreama Richard back to serve. Nice top spin serve. Heinrich going on two again, but kept alive this time by Bradley. And Schnitz tries to find a hole in the middle of the floor. Albers does a nice job to keep it alive. And now DeWolf does a nice job to keep it alive. He's getting more scrambling a little bit, but doing a much better job of reading the play defensively. Giving ourselves a chance, made DeWolf. The set by Ferguson. Bradley's attack kept alive. And now it'll be Bernard coming back for Westville. Catches that net and dies before it gets to the back row. So we're going to have another substitution. Sam Rose is going to come in for Dreamer Richard at the back row. Out there is all miscommunication. Yep, that's a miscommun miscommunication error right there. Albert serves just finding the middle of the floor. Ferguson to Schnitz. And it is kept alive by Heinrich with your new favorite form of uh, defense, right? Where they make the put the palms together put and palms together and hit them the off knuckles, the, hit it right off the knuckles, right? The knuckles or, or what she was, what they were doing earlier yeah, was, was hitting it right off the forearms. Okay, going yeah, this, backwards. This one was more off the hands, but with that the closed palms together and the fingers interlocked. Sometimes that's a little bit of a defensive thing. Uh, oh, the ball's coming at me really quickly. Got to get my hands up and. Argus has rallied off a couple points here in a row and while Bradley's back to serve, trailing 15 to 21. Heinrich's set to Bernard is off the hands of Rose. Bernard for Westville leading the team, having 72 kills coming into this contest. She's added several more this evening. Deneco coming in with 61. Bernard finding a spot on the back corner of the court. The big rope house with her attack. And she gets the kill. Again, just finding a spot on the floor. Sometimes less is more in the power department there. She's able to find a hole and get the point. Cox is going to be back to serve. Roberto Rogers finds Heinrich. Well done by DeWolf to dig it up. Cox is going to have the bump set to Schnitz. Good idea on the attack. Just sails along on the far side. As Westville is one point away here from taking set number two in this best of five varsity matchup. But a much better showing here in this set for the Lady Dragons. See if we can keep this thing going. The pass is going to go long and into the net. And that'll end it. That'll end the second set, 25-16. In favor of Westville, they'll go up two sets to zero. Well, as they're getting the teams reset, uh, we got a three-minute break. We're going to go ahead and, and go to another real quick commercial, and then uh, we will be back for set number three. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. And we're back and you are watching Argus TV on RTC TV4 with the uh, 
Uh, Argus Lady Dragons taking on the Westville Blackhawks, Lady Blackhawks in the uh, volleyball. And right now the Lady Blackhawks are up two sets to zero, getting ready for the third set. So Argus, Argus did come out and play uh, a lot, uh, a lot better. I, well, I want to say a lot better ball, but uh, um, they they played a lot better the second set over the first set, and now hopefully they can uh, even capitalize on on their momentum and and really bring it out on the third set, and then and then actually force a fourth set. Yeah, definitely better energy in that set altogether, especially defensively. Just like I say getting bodies on the floor, keeping the ball alive. It's what we like to see and. Those are the moments that we have seen throughout the season. So that consistency sometimes is just the key for us to make sure we're communicating. and We definitely can string together some nice plays and gave ourselves a chance there midway through that set before Westville started to open it up. We have a minute left before the start of the third set. Uh, Westville's out, out on the court ready to go. and. The Dragons are getting some last-second advice, momentum. like Sam Rose is going to start in the back row this go around. So Maddie DeWolf is waiting to check in at that libero position. Check the Westville side, and then I think we will be ready to go here shortly. And when you said Blackhawks again, it made me just think of how many times I feel like I might have said Warriors, and if I have, <laughs> I, maybe maybe I haven't said it as much as I think. Maybe I have. I don't know. Just when you said it, I went, huh? That doesn't sound like well, <laughs> it's been in my head all night still. <laughs> and, and with uh, you know, with with uh, doing volleyball and the girl soccer and, and boy soccer with all the different teams, I'm sitting here. Blackhawks, did I just mention the right one? <laughs> <laughs> well, especially when we when we have on our schedule typically Westville and Westview, and that's where I'm pulling the Warriors name from. On Saturday night, we didn't have, uh, you know, down on the lower third, how we have the, the, the pretty design, you know, the, the, the graphics, the graphics yeah. and that. And, well, on Saturday, we didn't have the... Uh, Napanee Panthers or North Northwood Panthers 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 <laughs> so we just had to make you know make some up real quick see if we can get out of this early slump we find ourselves in down three to nothing very quickly need to bring that energy that we hadn't set to I'm probably going to expect a, a text message from Sidney Miller here sometime real soon <laughs> on the fact that I actually screwed up the Northwoods uh, mascot's name. <laughs> well, Ar she, Argus just took that point away while, while we were sitting here laughing a little bit. <laughs> if she's not listening and didn't get that, she missed out tonight. That, <laughs> that was a moment. Well, we give it right back to Westville with a survey of our own. Not sure, other than a 1-0 lead perhaps, not sure we've held a lead in this match as the sets have really gotten underway. It's been Westville early and often. We've typically been playing catch-up. Bernard just kind of very lackadaisically with yeah. the kill over the net. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Just kind of nonchalantly up at the net and just pokes it over. It's and almost <laughs> like a Sunday walk in the park. <laughs> But it gets the job done, and like I said, she had 72 on the year coming in, so that approach works for her and works for the team. So Jerima Richard going to sub in for Sam Rose coming into the front row. Just 
to be the junior Schnitz back to serve. She's got 19 aces on the season. Good ball there, kept alive by the libero, and then done so by Schnitz. Her ball over will find Heinrich. The attack by Chasco, dug up by Schnitz. An echo tried to follow up the ball over the net by Schnitz and finds the net. Schnitz is back to serve again. Picking out that area right in the middle of the floor. And this time going towards the back corner and doing a good job of mixing up her serves, finding different spots. Deneco with a little flick beyond the net. Good job by Argus to read it. And Schnitz will shoot it over to the back row. Here's Bernard again at the front row. Good job by Richard to keep it alive. And then DeWolf, and then the other DeWolf with the attack. Good job by Argus. Scrambling, keeping that ball alive. It'll be Bernard. Let's see what we got. We're going to have a, either way, looks like Bernard's attempt found the floor for the point. We also had a net violation on the Argus side. So it'll be a point to the Lady Blackhawks. But again, good job there defensively. Getting after the ball and giving ourselves a chance. Good pass and set combination there. Looked like the approach by Richard just slightly off and not being where she wanted to be to be able to snap that ball down, but it's a good idea. See if we come right back to it again. Ferguson's gonna find DeWolf in the middle. Her attack will find Bernard and kept alive. Free ball over by Chesco and Lady Dragons with an opportunity again here as Richard just plays a tip. And that free ball will sail long as Ferguson thought about it for a oh, long time. I thought, that was, uh, <laughs> I thought she was going to go for it. But the teammates for Argus helping call that thing out as they were tracking it. I think helped influence her to pull her hands back and 7-5 the game, and there's Heinrich again, just very calm and collected about that little tip attack over the net. She does a good job mixing it up, and usually does a nice job as the pass is being made of looking over her shoulder, seeing if that hole is there, and just picks her moments to go put that thing into the hole. As we have Richard into the net, It seems every time we get to about two points, Westville is quick to open it back up as they are now leading by four. And Caitlin DeWolf looking at the far referee. Looked like a little bit of hesitation there as I think the Lady Dragons thought that ball fell in bounds and I did from up here, but I've got a long shot at it. And referee on the near side saying it's out of bounds or perhaps it was on the other side of the of the pole. Again, I don't have a good angle for that. The neck is attacked. He's going to see a long, and that ball is all the way up onto the stage and being chased down by Ferguson, who will hand off to Mackenzie Cox to serve. First serve, good spot in the back corner. Westfield is only going to have a free ball out of this. Good opportunity for the Lady Dragons coming off the free ball. That's what we want there. Richard, good attack. But dug up. And Deneco coming right back. Good job by both teams. Good defense by both teams to dig it up. And now it's going to be Botzo with the tip. And again, Argus is there. And DeWolf's attack from the back row finds the net. Another good rally, though, by both teams going back and forth. Good plays defensively. Deneco is back to serve. She's the one that rallied off about 13 or 14 in set number one. And Ferguson will break that up right now with a kill. And a point for Argus. 
And Schnitz will check into the game. Always like that substitution with Sammy Ferguson and Sierra Schnitz. Trying to get that little high five over there. A little bit of height difference. A little height difference, yeah. <laughs> I think that is our tallest player and our shortest player on the rosters. So that serve sailed out of bounds. And we'll send it back over to Westville with the 12-7 lead. Sam Rose back into the game to provide some passing for the Lady Dragons. Ferguson's attack attempt is kept alive by Chasco and Bernard will play the free ball. Should be a good opportunity here with Cox under the ball, looking for Snitz. Not able to get too much on that as she keeps the ball alive in the back row. Ball came off the fingers a little funny for the Wolf and it's gonna have to be a free ball. And Sierra's got a long time under it. <laughs> and again, a good read. She had a lot of time to make up her mind on what she wanted to do. It looked like it might have been a big swing and instead just opts for the nice tip and finds a hole in the middle of the floor. She's had several tonight where she's done a nice job of mixing things up and finding openings on the court. It's going to be Bradley. Nice little attempt on the near side. The Heinrich able to keep it alive and now shoots one over herself. Be a point for the Lady Blackhawks, 13 to 8. I was saying earlier, I think while you had your headset off, it seems like we just constantly, right at that four or five point mark, just can't quite get over the hurdle. It's always like with us with softball. You know, it's always that one inning. One inning, right? That yeah. one inning. <laughs> yeah, Westville seems to get that gap on us, and then we just can't quite close it back up. Looks like Ferguson got called for a violation under the net there. I've seen that called more this year than I have in years past. I thought they were starting to get to the point. Again, this is getting into the rules that I just can't clarify enough, but I thought they were getting to the point of allowing feet to touch the line or even go a little over so long as you were not interfering with a player on the other side of the net. And I certainly didn't think there was anybody in the area of Ferguson's foot, but again, the rules change this and you know every other year it seems like, so perhaps something there I don't know of or it might just be a referee's discretion type of call. But just as I talked about a four point spread, we're now up to eight. As Heinrich the setter for Westville has rallied off about four or five serves of her own. And just got to find that ability to break up this rotation and get ourselves back into this set before it's too late. Could be Schnitz's pass tight into the net, kept alive by Cox. Good job underneath the net to pull that ball out. And Rose's free ball will find Westville's side. And Schnitz looking to shove that one over and finds the net. Now I was, I was watching that one on the screen, so I didn't get to watch that, that you know, in the big area. But it looked like she was almost like she grabbed it and was trying to slam it. They like will they with the basketball. They will surprisingly let the hitters probably hold it a little longer than you would think at times to kind of, I guess I want to call it a throw tip. <laughs> they. They're very picky about the lifts, but it seems like if it's an attack over the net at times, they really will let you kind of have your hands on the ball a little longer than you would think by looking at it. One of those things I guess they'll call it if they don't like it is we get called for a two-touch error. I don't think we've had as many of those tonight. No, not um, tonight. Now that I see that one called, I think our setters in general have done a better job this evening. I don't know if it was if it was the varsity games or if it was during the JV, but I know they called one of them it was a five, six, seven I mean, years just sitting there because the one girl was underneath the net, she just couldn't get it up <laughs> and it kept coming back into her face. <laughs> Good back row attack by Manny DeWolf. Kendall Ferguson will get the assist and that's a fun attack for DeWolf. He doesn't get to play the front row, so that's the best way she'll ever get a kill is with the attack from the backside there and Good timing on that one. It's Ferguson's floating serve. Too tough for Bonzik to handle for Westville. She must have checked into the game at some point when I wasn't looking for the Lady Blackhawks. 
to Neko. We'll play the ball to Heinrich, who's bump set. It's tight into the net. We've had a three-point run here. Well, let's see if we can get a little serve run of our own. Westville certainly had two or three of them. Uh, Ferguson doing a good job keeping the ball in play, and there's Heinrich trying to be a little sneaky again on her second touch attack. Now she chooses to go over to the far side, and that's really well done by Nicole Albers with a cross-court attack. That can be a hole a lot of times defensively for other teams, but it is a tight area to hit. you got to get over that net and get that ball back down before it sails wide on you. And just like that, Westville picks up a couple points, and now they are sitting four away from wrapping this thing up in three. Kendall Ferguson tight at the net. Ops to play it over, and Heinrich getting a little help from the net of her own. And two inches lower, and that ball probably comes back to her instead. Rolls over the net and finds an opening on the floor. 22 to 11. Westville's doubled us up here in the third set. Good job by Ferguson to keep it alive, and Sam Rose will play the free ball over. Heiner going outside to Deneco. Her attack is long. Saw Deneco during warm-ups, and she was really pounding some home, but during, during the match here, it seems like a few of her hits have sailed beyond the far end line. And she is... Uh, Another one for Westville that has 61 kills. She's second on the team. So one that we would expect to put some pressure on offensively. Down 10, Sierra Schnitz trying to keep this set alive. Westville are gonna play the free ball over. This is where we'd like to see a good attack. Bradley's going to look for the back row, but her attempt is going to go long. As Westville is sitting at match point now. It's going to be Bernard. Back to serve for Westville. She's got 15 aces on the season, and a 90% serve rate. Girl house, nice pass to Kendall Ferguson. It's going to be Dreamer Richard. Looks like that one was going to go long, but Bernard kept it alive, and Deneco will play it over the net. Girl house's ball sails over the net, and we are scrambling again, but got to give ourselves a chance as Bradley's attack is dug up by Heinrich. And now Richard's free ball over the net. Heinrich doing what she's done very well all match. Finds that opportunity to play the quick tip over to the net and that will end it as Westville goes on to win the third set 25 to 13. Well as we're finishing things up here uh, you've been watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4. Uh, we will be back uh, to broadcast both the boys and girls game on Saturday. I believe the boys game starts at 1230 and then the uh, girls game is at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Uh, so we will wish everybody a good night, and like I said, we will be back live again on Saturday. <laughs>